Okay, let's start again. Um, keys to make good leases. First, you need to negotiate value of the car before signing the leases. Don't express your interest in leasing until you negotiate the price of the lease. Yeah, down payment. Okay, uh, try to keep to a minimum of down payment, and warranty. Make sure it covers the entire lease period for all major repairs. So, and you have to make a definition of normal wear and tear, termination fee. Um, know what it is. Have insurance protection to cover an early termination policy in case of an accident. Depreciation factor. Since the lease payment is based on what the vehicle is worth at the end of the lease, you might pay less on a more expensive car that depreciates slowly. Rent or finance charges. You want to you want the lowest possible you can find from uh, list you want the lowest possible rent or finance charges which you can find online or you can negotiate with the uh, list list all. okay uh, figure 8.2 uh, this is a type of um, form for leasing act lease disclosure form yeah so and, um, we would I think it depends on each company and they have um, different types of forms but more basically it tells um, the items here okay uh, maintain your purchases uh, keep the vehicle in best running condition uh, you must know how to take care of your car and don't ignore signs of troubles um, when you're supposed to go out and service a car make sure you do it on time and if you hear any sound that is out of normal you make sure you go to the mechanic and check it so make sure you take care, take good care of the car your first line of protection is the warranty uh, because without the warranty you have to come up with your own your money Okay, this is a worksheet for lease versus purchase decision. Okay, you can compare here. As you can see, this is cost of purchasing and this is a cost of leases. Uh, they want to buy, this person wanted to buy Lexus IS250 for two years. Uh, the purchase price and the lease price. So the price is the same. Down payment is 6080 So uh, you can see here, Expected market value of the car and at the end of the two years is 23,500. Uh, this value is subject, subtracted in the purchase situation and is used to negotiate to the monthly leasing payment in the lease situation. Okay, the, and two years loan at 8% for 27,500 would be a monthly payment of 1,230.18. Uh, the 5% opportunity cost of the payment. So, uh, capitalized cost for leasing is 34000 Cost reduction, 2950 And uh, monthly lease payment is 459.83. Security deposit is 4075 Okay, uh, these are the information given. Agreed upon price, this is the price. Down payment, uh, total loan payment, that will be... 1230.18 times 24 this is for 2 years and opportunity cost 5 years and total of purchasing is 13,000 meanwhile leasing total of purchasing is 14,000 so we ignore the taxes, the title, the registration in this example because generally the same whether you lease or you purchase so these are the difference between the two but on the advantage is that uh, leasing you will not get the car but purchasing the car at the end of the two years it become yours so you you should know you should know what you want better okay we are moving to a house now eh? buying house many people equate home ownership with financial success because uh, the bigger your house the more successful you are housing costs can take up over 25% off after tax income. Meaning to say your monthly income, 25% goes to your house. They take out the largest chunk of 
income uh, for your debt payment. Home ownership is also an investment, biggest investment that you will ever make. So use the smart buying approach. A house, most potential for capital appreciation, uh, cooperatives or condominiums, ownership's fee, how homeowner's fee, plan unit development, uh, you've got to pay uh, the servicing fees, apartment and other rental housing. Okay, these are the types of uh, housing options that you have. Step one, again, is the same, differentiate one from needs. What about the house is so important? Okay, some people wanted to live in an apartment because of security reason. They wanted to live in condominium because of security reasons. Uh, some people wanted a landed property because um, it's easier for a family with children. So if you are a single, um, what is the best for you? I don't think uh, a bungalow would suit a single person because it's a bit too large. And right after working and uh, you want to buy a house, I think it's more suitable to rent than to buy. And probably you will team up with your friends to rent an apartment or a condo. So what suits you better? What about the house is important? What do you want before you look? Okay, Know what you want before you look for a house. Affordability, location, neighborhood, convenience, school. Affordability, that's the first thing. How much can you pay? Location, is it near to your workplace? Is it near to the... Um, where is it located? Is it near to the town? Is it in the... Uh, urban area or suburban area, neighborhood, convenience, and school. Do your homework. Investigate the potential, the potential home and all that goes along with it. Uh, the neighborhood, the community lifestyle, whether it satisfies your needs. This is important. Um, there are areas that we know is classified as. Uh, black area so do not rent a, a house there or do not buy a house there because the value will not appreciate over time and for example house with a lot of um, theft cases is also uh, an if a factor not to buy in those area because it might actually affect if you would like to resell the house or it's not secured for yourself so what are the community lifestyles are they are they are you do you know your neighbor uh, will they talk to you or will they just um, ignore you if anything happen? Uh, you, if you have two friendly neighbor, also it's not good because they die to, to, you know, investigate whatever that you going on in your house and so on and so forth. Okay, then the biggest, the biggest question is how much can you afford to pay? Uh, these are the one time costs, yeah. The one time cost that you need to do is that you need to have uh, ready is the down payment. This is the amount of money outside of the not outside of or not covered by the mortgage funds that the home buyer puts down on the house on the time of sales. Yeah, so you have to pay to the developer a down payment. Uh, this is outside your loan payment. Okay, so closing and settlement costs which include. Um, expenses associated with finalizing the transfer of ownership of the house. Uh, these are another another expenses. Uh, point or discount points. Uh, charges used to raise the effective cost of mortgage loan, which must be paid in full at the time of closing. Uh, loan origination fee. This is a fee of generally one point or one percent of the loan amount. It purpose is to compensate the lender for the cost of reviewing and finalizing the loan. And then we have uh, application fee. This is a fee for an appraisal of the house which is generally required before a mortgage loan is approved. Although the cost varies depending on the size and location of the house and it can easily run up to probably 800 to 1200 So that's kind of expensive. And title search fee, this is an investigation of the public land record to determine the legal ownership right to the property or to the home. Uh, this normally you go and pay at the uh, local government. 
to to search for a title field. These are all one time cost. Okay, this is an example of estimated initial cost of buying. This is in dollars. So you have alternate fee, recording fee, credit report and everything. So a lot. Okay, you find out about this first before you purchase a house. And then recurring cost, of course, the monthly payment. Right? Uh, monthly payment is a recurring cost. And uh, another one is PITI. PITI is actually an acronym standing for the total of your monthly principal interest taxes and insurance. Next, we have maintenance and operating cost. That is repairs, renovations, upgrade and landscaping. So, this is a monthly mortgage payment required to repair a 10,000 loan with different interest rates and different maturity. So, this is the longest maturity, 10 to 40 years and these are the different rates. If you realize, if for a longer time, the more the, the length. Let's say the interest rate is 4%, 10 years you pay more because it's a shorter term. The longer the term, the higher the, the longer the lower the down pay, uh, sorry, the lower the monthly payment. However, it increases your interest, the more you pay on interest. Renting versus buying, okay. Decision based on lifestyle, okay. Um, whether it suited you to buy or to rent. Uh, renting advantages, financial and lifestyle flexibility, and if you are, uh, if you have an increment in your income, you would like to move to a better housing, you be, might be able to do so because you are renting it, not buying it. Compare cost for each alternative. Buying advantages is that longer stays and appreciations, itemized taxes are for saving to you here. Yeah? So this is uh, features of renting versus buying. Uh, so you can read on it on your own uh, this is the worksheet just like the car just now uh, cost of renting and cost of buying to you uh, what are the difference yeah you can see uh, of course it's one year this is seven years so the, the renting for one year is 11,114 uh, while buying cost will be 14,000 okay Determine what you can afford. Okay, what is the maximum amount will the bank lend to me? It depends actually on your financial history. Are you a good um, pay master? Are you are you good in paying your credit? Uh, are you a good credit? You, do you have a good credit value? The bank will check on that and your ability to pay and the potential value of the house to raise in the future. Calculating your mortgage limit, okay. Uh, the maximum loan size you qualify for is determined by the financial picture that the developer that develops as the lender review these uh, three measures of your ability to pay. Okay, we will look uh, how much you should borrow. Okay, should I borrow up to the maximum? Uh, it depends on your ability to pay, to pay the bank uh, for their monthly payment. How big is the down payment that I can afford? Okay, this worksheet for calculating your maximum size mortgage loan that you can qualify for. Assumption, you have an annual gross income of 65000 Estimated monthly real estate tax and insurance is 200 Anticipated interest rates on the mortgage is 8%. Mortgage maturity 30 years. Current non-mortgage debt payment, what you have now is 400 Fund available for down payment and closing costs fifty six thousand. Closing costs are estimated to be ten thousand. Minimum acceptable down payment is twenty percent. So, this is your monthly income five four one seven. Uh, annual income divided by twelve, and times twenty eight. That is, uh, this is interest, tax, and insurance. Yeah. Uh, this is principal, interest, tax and insurance limit, 28%. Uh, your, mon your monthly income times 28% give you 1517. Less estimated real estate taxes, uh, that is 200 minus 200 equals to maximum monthly mortgage payment is 1317.
this is what you need to pay monthly then using table 